check this out. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Go at T minus five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. This is resortloop.com, the gateway to the magic. Here's your host, Tim Scott. Hey, everybody. Yes, thanks for joining us. This is May the 4th, 2022. You know what that means. May the 4th be with you. And I thought there would be no better show to do this day than to have two good friends of the show on. You know her from the DVC Roundtable, Emily Hansa Hicks. Well, hello, Earthlings. How are you all? <laughs> and joining mm-hmm. her is her lovely husband, Matt, who you might remember from Remove, Rewind, and Refurb, World Showcase East and West. Mr. Matt Hicks. Matt, how are you doing? Doing well, very well. Thank you. Oh, well, thanks for joining me on the show, both of you. I want to talk about this Galactic Star Cruiser. This has been a little in the do, in the Disney news for a little bit. <laughs> Slightly controversial. Sounds like it's a lot of fun. Guys, how did you decide to go? Who was the first one? Who said, who woke up one day and said, you know, I think we need to go on the Star Cruiser. How did this all go down? Oh, that's a good question. I can barely remember. I think I, I decided we were going to go because I thought Matt would want to go. And I didn't think there was really any question, so I figured I just should book it for him. And oh. I kind of tried to surprise him, but I don't think that worked because I was, I think I got hung up on twice while I was trying to book for it. And it took about like two days, two full days, if I recall correctly. <laughs> so the second day, uh, I, you know, ear smoke was steaming out of my ears. So I think I finally was like, hey, Matt, you don't like surprises, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> And I don't, for the record. So <laughs> You don't like surprises? <laughs> no. Oh, so how do you remember going down? Is that how it went down? Yeah, I remember she was on the phone for, uh, for yeah, pretty much two days straight. And, and I don't mean like nine to five, two days. I mean, you know, like first thing in the morning, last thing at night kind of thing. She was on the phone that long. <laughs> it was a lot of hold music. <laughs> oh, I think we all know about that. <laughs> oh my goodness. So you booked your trip. Uh, who went That's on the trip? Right. Was it you and the lovely kids? Was it just you guys? It was all five of us. <gasps> yep. All five. Oh, remind, yeah. us, remind us how old the kids are so we all have a good visual idea of what's what's happening. So we have the twin uh oh my gosh, how old are they? Uh twin nine year olds and a seven year old. And uh the nine year olds are girls and our seven year old's a boy. And Matt had initially suggested that we go alone, just the two of us, which I would recommend to people. I just couldn't imagine telling the children we were going without them. <laughs> are the kids are the kids Star Wars fans as well? Oh yeah. I'll yes. Let Matt- uh, yes, they were um aware of Star Wars. Um and they had their their moments. Um you know, in terms of uh different Lego sets and uh, some of that, but leading up to it, they really started to get into it. And now they, all three of them are definitely Star Wars fans. That's awesome. There's no doubt about that. How much yeah. uh, background information did you give them before you went? Did you make them watch all the movies? What would what, 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 you do? Um, I have made them watch all the movies. Um, but in terms of the Star Cruiser itself, we really kind of kept ourselves um, blind to it because we mm-hmm. didn't want any spoilers now that's not to say i didn't see some of the marketing that everybody went crazy about um but uh, you know so i did see some of that but in terms of like you know we watched disney disney promotional stuff but we kind of stayed away from anything else that might give us a hint as to what was what was going on or what to expect Mm -hmm. um and then um you know leading up to it we we had done a, uh, a short cruise, I think what Emily, like two, two and a half weeks before. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we had literally just been down to Florida, um, like two weeks before, and then we were going right back for another short trip. So it, it was, um, it, it, yeah, <laughs> the lead up, it, the lead up was stressful no matter what. Cause I think gotcha. we, we drove for both. Um, no, we flew for the star cruiser. Sorry. 
Um, yeah. So it was stressful for both, but um, yeah, it, you know, it was just kind of one thing. It was one thing and then it was another. Mm -hmm. And um, so we didn't do a whole lot of buildup, at least uh, I didn't. Our, we, we, Emily made a lovely drawing of the Star Cruiser that was intended to be filled in as a countdown. And I think the first three squares of it got filled in oh. or something. Um, <laughs> Not more, but yeah. So, yeah. And then there was a scramble to put costumes together. Um, and uh, it, that was one of the, the funnier moments, uh, you know, when Emily accused me of not taking it seriously. And I was like, I'm supposed to take this seriously. <laughs> like, we're going on a Star Wars cruise ship. <laughs> like, oh. um, but um, yeah. Well, every yeah, I, had a, I had a number of uh, a number of funny uh, alternatives to my costume that she didn't enjoy. So, oh. hmm. <laughs> I feel like that's something yeah. we can't really talk about. Did Did you have family themed uh, <laughs> outfits? How did you acquire these outfits, and what, what were they? Oh yeah, I have a totally different take on this build up. I think that there <laughs> was planning and a ton of build up. And I was begging the children. I had like brought down all of our Star Wars books and re reference materials, all. And they were sitting on our, our uh, coffee table and I was begging the children to start like really getting into their backstories and come up with their costume ideas. And uh, it was like pulling teeth. Uh, but eventually, eventually I got um, some straight answers out of them. And the one who kept waffling, I just convinced her uh, to just go along for the ride. And we we went with um, I'm a big Darth Maul fan, as people may know. So the girls and I went as night sisters. And my son wanted to be a Jedi. So we got him. A, that was the easiest one. I just ordered a Jedi costume. But for the girls and I, I had all kinds of, you know, I'd gone to Joanne Fabrics two weeks in a row, I think, picking out like the right felts and stuff. And so we had we had full Jedi outfit or sorry, Night Sister outfits with our and I had extra face makeup for face tattoos. And and yes, and Matt decided to buy like a poncho or something or <laughs> You know, and called that a costume, you know, but hey, he looks good. He looks good. <laughs> um, well, I bought um, that big red drapey robe kind of thing. Um, and then I did, um, I had this other really kind of space looking type sweater with the built in kind of scarf thing, but it was so hot that I don't think I would have lasted, you know. 10 minutes in it without falling over from heat exhaustion. It was just too hot to wear. So um, I called an audible and I bought um, some stuff uh, in um, Batu or Star Wars land um, while we were on our day excursion for the second day. So um, I went pretty normal into Star Wars land in terms of, I think I just had pants and a t-shirt on. Um, so I, I didn't go into costume there, but um, I was, I was pretty casual on the costume front uh, okay. compared to the other four, but um, anybody who's considering going can, you can do, there were people there in, in full on costumes. Um, and then there were people there that, you know, did no costume at all. They were literally walking around in like shorts and t-shirts, um, which it was all fine. Um, you know, you, you know, obviously the, the people in costume were, were great. And then, you know, it was okay if people didn't want to be in costume. So it was, it was all okay. okay. Um, I would, you know, I wouldn't worry about being in costume, but I would, I would definitely say if you want to have fun with it, you should definitely go themed at least. Okay. So you um, feel what's, what's the expression? The what's the expression? Disney bounding, you know, yes. um, yeah. you know, go themed. <laughs> at least Disney bound. Yes. Yeah. Look at, that. <laughs> Look at that. Matt knowing Disney bounding. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So, uh, when was your cruise? I mean, what, what were your dates? Were you, uh, you were one of the first ones, I believe, weren't you? We were, we were on the third, the third, uh, cruise. Awesome. And as, uh, I think we left, what was it? May 5th or no, March 5th, sorry, March 5th through the 7th. And it was, no, that was when we were on the cruiser. Okay. So we did yep. the cruise in February. Okay. Oh, you're talking about the star cruiser. Okay. Yep. The cruise, yes. you know, space. Um, so, <laughs> and we, um, yeah, it was it was great. It was uh, third the third cruise for them, and let's see. I think we they had already done their soft opens and everything like that. So I think that they were pretty. I thought I thought it went pretty well. It was pretty well oiled. And the other interesting thing that we had probably that other the first two may not have had was they gave us all our own data pads instead of allowing us to use our own 
uh, cell phones as data pads. And of course, your data pad is actually an iPhone, but they gave us, they gave everybody their own data pad. And I think they made some reference to the idea that it's because for the first couple of voyages, people were having trouble mm. with their own, using their own devices. So we all got brand new ones, which was a little bit, um, it was good because you had like a very devoted device. But on the other hand, you had to carry your own cell phone around if you wanted to take pictures because everything else was disabled on the phone except the the Disney Parks app for you. Gotcha. Okay, so mm -hmm. at your cruise day, you're getting ready to, to depart. How's it all begin once you get there? How do you get there? Is there a special shuttle? Did you drive? Matt, you want to take this one? Yeah, so we we ended up um, driving down, and we got in the night before, and we stayed at the Riviera, which was lovely. Um, and they kind of they kind of let us hang out a little longer. They gave, I think they gave us a late checkout mm -hmm. um, because we couldn't get on the cruiser until was it noon or one one, one o'clock yeah and we still um so we took a taxi or no we didn't drive down we flew down uh, we took a taxi from the riviera to the star cruiser hotel itself um they at the time i don't know if they're still doing this so don't count on it they comp the taxi ride um mm -hmm. so when we got there uh disney took care of the taxi um, so there was no special shuttle, uh, nothing like that. Um, and the line to get in, we were, we knew we were running late cause the taxi took a while to get, um, and, uh, the line to get in was inc incredibly long. We were probably some of the last people to actually, um, catch the shuttle to the cruiser, okay. if you will. But to be clear, we were not late though, because it was check-in from one to four and mm -hmm. we got pretty much at like one, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the line was really long. <laughs> oh, everybody right. probably anxious to get there. Yeah. Yep. It and it is, you, the, <laughs> it is limited to what, like, um, there's only 200 rooms or a hundred rooms. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not a big group to begin with, but we were definitely, uh, in terms of actually getting there to get the shuttle, to get on the cruiser, we were, towards the tail end of it. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So once you get there and you're in line, like when does the cruise start? How does the whole experience begin that you know, okay, this is now, now we've begun the star cruiser portion of the vacation. As soon as you get off the taxi, uh, really? they are in. Yeah. Everybody, um, all the cast members are full, full on in cast member mode. Um, they all have backstories. They, um, they were all pretty flawless in their execution of their backstories. Um, uh, so everybody there in the cruiser has a backstory in terms of what, where they're from, what their name is, what they're doing there. And it all kind of, you know, it all fits in. And um, so that part was really cool. The immersion was pretty much immediate. Um, mm -hmm. And then they do the, the shuttle ride to the star cruiser, um, which is, you know, part of the whole thing. Um, very, um, it's, it's, it really starts from the moment you set foot in, uh, in, in, into the, the main entrance area of the, of the star cruiser terminal, if you will. Um, and then, uh, so by the time we got in, I think, we wandered around. I, I can't remember what order we went, but I know we ended up having a late lunch. Mm -hmm. Didn't we? Um, we, we, you know, the, the, the food service hall was or dining hall or whatever was, was open. Right. Um, and, uh, we had a late lunch and, and the food was, um, incredible in my opinion. It was really? incredible. Um, yeah. The theming of it, uh, how they themed it and, and the actual food itself. I, I don't have any complaints about any of the food. It was it was wow. all really good. Yeah. I would say the first thing that we did, though, it, when we got off the shuttle and they opened up to the the lobby of the Star Cruiser, the atrium, which was just just an amazing experience just to have that sort mm -hmm. of for your eyes. They, I believe we had an escort take us to our room. So they showed us our room, showed us how to operate the doors, introduced us to our our personal droid unit thing in the wall mm -hmm. and 
got us settled. And that's where we plugged in, you know, we plugged in our chargers and everything like that. And then I think we then right went right off over to lunch and we were all scrolling through our, our, um, our data pads to see what kind of missions were in there. And there were already preloaded, you know, things we already could start doing. Oh, wow. Immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even though it doesn't start, the muster drill doesn't start for the ship at four, which it's very clear you have to be there for muster. Uh, there's a ton of things you can do before four. Um, there are lots of, there's, and they encourage you to take a ship tour. So they have tours running every so often. And then the oh, bar is mm -hmm. open. So you can go, I think we went and tried a fun cocktail and walked around and did a ship tour and saw the bridge and the engineering room and all the things that would become, you know, sort of our, our, backdrop for the next couple of days is there anything you can e in the disney sphere that we would understand that, like what size is this galactic star cruiser compared to huh yeah. that's a great question the Maybe. main the main yeah. hall like uh the the atrium where you walk in it was very um very cruise like um yeah. it, it, that type of feel okay. it's it's a couple stories high um all 100 themed yeah, the, the atrium feels like the the center of uh, the fantasy or the dream okay. as far as a so it's it's probably it's open about three stories high, and the difference is that there's rooms arranged on either on all sides of it that you can see into to some degree. So the gift shop and there's like a little sort of cafe on one side that you can see, and then there's the bar that spans the other side. And or the lounge, and then there's the bridge, which you can see into from the main space. So I'm trying to think of other, like a hotel lobby that would be, um, obviously the Grand Floridian lobby is too tall. Like maybe the Polynesian lobby. Okay. But thin, like narrower. Uh, but it has that same feeling with, that the Poly has where you have the gift shop off to one side, a restaurant over here, you know, like the rooms that are beyond that main space. Okay. But it is impressive. It is really the it, it's one of those things that really could take your breath away. They have these huge holographic columns and panels where you can see space going by. And it, it was surprisingly immersive. You know, I, wow. I would say we were there with like we were ready to be immersed. But, so we were an easy, easy audience for them. But it was really, really immersive. Excellent. Did you have, I imagine you said it was the third cruiser. I imagine it was fully booked or as crowded as it would ever get on the star cruiser. I think so. There were, they yeah. didn't have COVID protocols. So I don't think anybody would have been turned away if they had been, you know, about to board or anything like that. I don't think there was any testing requirements mm -hmm. or anything. Okay. Um, that was, and I don't think, and I don't think, that's a, even an issue anymore, but I don't think masks were required. Masks weren't required except when you were in the shuttles. Yeah, when you were uh, in the uh, public transportation, but I don't even think that would be required now. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. So the first day, what were some of the, uh, what would you call them, excursions or jobs or things you needed to do? We had the muster drill the first day, which is where the story, the story's already going around you. But that's where it really solidifies into a, a story thread. And then you have you were assigned light cyber training or bridge ops training or so you had sort of like classes essentially that you had to go to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it became important. Um, and then they had, But they're all fun. Um, yeah, yeah. And there are two you know, the, the lightsaber training wasn't my favorite, but um, but yeah, it, it's all fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the dinner services, there was an early dinner and a late dinner. And it's just kind of like if you've done a Disney cruise where you have, you know, part of part of the action is happening. Part of the storyline is happening for the people that are on the late dinner uh, during the early dinner and then vice versa. And gotcha. so this, I, everybody experiences the same story elements, but they're they're uh, doing it at sort of flip flopped times, which helps to keep it sort of smaller and Great. And then that first night you had the, the evening of Gaia concert, which I don't know if Matt would agree, but I thought it was amazing. And I know there was all this, uh, you know, hullabaloo, hullabaloo about the promos with Gaia. And I really feel like the, the mistake they made there was like, what is it, burying the lead or something? They were, they 
tried to show us too much because if you're in the room with her and that performance starts, you end up, you know, you end up singing along to these songs with words that you've never heard before. And the music, they do such a great job with music at Disney, like always, but there's such a huge power behind that vocalist. And I don't know if it's the same person every time, but man, it was a, it was a blow you away concert experience. In my opinion, wow. it was like, ch- like chills down your spine kind of music. So I don't know. What do you think, Matt? Yeah. The, the entertainment aspect of it in terms of it being a concert was, um, was amazing. Um, especially when you consider, you know, it, it's all new. Um, it's, new music it's intended to sound otherworldly um but it's still good it's still there's still something um recognizable Uh, Mm -hmm. i don't know if i'm saying that correctly but it's not so otherworldly that you're like oh this is like a genre of music i can't even like process but it it was still it was done the show aspect of it it truly was a show and it was done very very well um as most shows like that are uh, mm-hmm. at Disney. So it, it was, it was very good. Um, and you know, the immersion, like I said, it, it starts the moment you set foot in and you know, there's so much stuff to interact with. Um, and it, you know, it, it, there's a couple of different angles to take with it. And, and one of them is I'm just going to be entertained. I'm going to come into this star Wars themed hotel and I'm going to be entertained by it. And then there's the the gaming aspect of it, mm-hmm. um, which is, in my opinion, the the real untold <laughs> story of it all, um, or and the hardest part to convey about what makes it so fun um, is the gaming aspect of it starts almost immediately, where you can start doing these missions, especially after you get a few of the classes, if you will, the lightsaber training done, the bridge training, and you meet. The, the characters that you're interacting with, you meet the, you meet them and you, you're literally interacting with them. And then, you know, some of it's obviously programmed into your data pad. And then as you're playing the game, that's when the whole choose your own adventure kind of comes into play. And so you get your own experience based on the choices that you make in these missions. Um, you know, you can be, you can follow a Jedi path. You can follow a scoundrel path. You can follow um, uh, a first order path. And, or, you know, the mistake that I will admit that I made was I was a little too passive on the gaming front because I was trying to take it all in and be entertained. Um, and I missed out on some of the gaming aspect of it. So I ended up just getting, ultimately just kind of getting routed <laughs> into a storyline because I, okay. I wouldn't choose one way or the other. <laughs> oh, right, so, right. Um, so they make you, uh, they make you do one, one or the other at some point. Um, and so that part was fun. So if you were to do it again, um, you could have a completely different experience based on the choices that you make in these missions. And, and the, you know, the whole while this data pad that you have, there's chatter going on. Everybody's trying to talk to you. Um, all these different people are trying to talk to you and, trying to help get your help to do whatever it is uh, they want to do and how you interact with them really kind of sets the tone for the gaming aspect, but all of the entertainment aspect of it is, is built into that. So the show that dinner show that you're at is all part of the story. So there's, you were watching a show, but you're also, there's, you know, there's things going on and mm-hmm. you don't fully know what's in going on yet. And I'm not going to ruin them. Um, there's right. no spoilers here. Right. You don't fully know what's going on yet or, or who's who you're just getting introduced to the characters. And that's, that whole show is that's what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But they're also, you know, at the end of the day, it's still really good entertainment. Even if there wasn't a story mixed into it is, is mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say. Right. Yeah. You could treat it like a regular cruise. And when he says that people are trying to talk to you, what he means is that they're sending messages into your messaging function in your data pad. So you're getting messages from people that you don't know yet, but you're going to be meeting along the way. And it's like a lot of the people we're talking about, it's essentially if you've ever played video games, they're non-player characters. And that's what we're talking about. There's there's basically 
there are people on the ship that probably didn't pay to go on. Oh. <laughs> and, so we're not talking well, other passengers are trying to get a hold of you to right. do things. These are uh, right. These Star are, Wars yeah, universe is, people. And they're yes. immersed amongst you, and they all have – they all – bring elements of these stories to you and so and th- but they talk to you just like they're in, uh, some of them i mean depending on what their roles are they talk to you like they're a fellow passenger or mm-hmm. you know they're you know somebody's you know like uh like a manager or something everybody has that it's basically like nobody is there accidentally there mm-hmm. and even in the um the bars the uh, matt was talking about the backstory the the people at the gift shop and in the bar and everywhere, even the people that don't have sort of what I would call like a cast role, like as in um, they don't have necessarily a named character they're playing. Everybody has a planet that they're supposed to be from and they have their names. And I, I don't even know if they I think people had all kinds of names, but they the people they would talk to you. And if you talk to them about something in Star Wars, but they were from a planet that wasn't familiar with that, they would stare at you blankly and pleasantly. And be like, oh, can you tell, like, and it took me a while to sort of realize that this one person who claimed. Tell me more about this Han Solo. (laughs) Who is he? (laughs) I was like, I was like, wait, you work here and you don't know who Han Solo is. And then I realized, oh, wait, he is from a small farming planet and he just got, he just started on this cruise line. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's never heard of Han Solo. He's never been out of his little village before. And so once I sort of remembered that, hey, like I'm supposed to be. I, pl- I should play along here too. <laughs> then it, it was just really cool. Everybody was part. It, yeah. Everybody was part of the story and you could become part of the story. And, and I will say in a plug for dressing up in full immersion, um, mm-hmm. I feel like the story, the people that were key parts of those stories, I feel that like they gravitated towards people they knew were going to run with it and were dressed up and would be immersed. So I feel like, and also, if you have a recognizable costume, which if you know what a Night Sister looks like, if you know what Darth Maul looks like, you sort of know what a Night Sister looks like. So I had face, you know, drawing like tattoos on my face, and so I was pretty recognizable. And I felt like they would, you know, point to me across from the room and and make a point to do something or involve me in something because it was easy to sort of grab me. And then to the other extent, when you were talking about missing some of the gaming aspects, Matt, it made me realize. Um, so when the kids are running around doing things. They're not as, they're obviously not as sophisticated in trying to figure out all these elements and see what they have to do. But, but the characters that are around you, I hate to call them characters, but the, the <laughs> integral people on the starship have an amazing way of weaving the kids in. So they'll just grab a bunch of kids because they know the kids haven't figured out that they have to scan here, tap here, you know, dance onto your tiptoes. <laughs> So they'll just grab a whole group of kids and be like, you know, I, I won't give any spoilers, but, but they'll be like, hey, do you want to do or like, you know, what do you think about this? Like, who's your allegiance with? Or mm-hmm. And then and they will take everybody, take all those kids like a Pied Piper over and then they go over to one of these stations. I forget what they're called, consoles or something. And they will do this magical thing and then they'll have the kids put their their magic bands, which are of course, exclusive to the Chandrilla Starliner. Um, and they will, they'll, they'll basically move the kids along the storyline so that they are still involved and that they can still do the next thing, which I, and I think they did that with the adults too. And if you miss a step sometimes along the way, then you don't get to the next goal. And then mm-hmm. to Matt's point about, you know, that being a really big part of the experience, if you want it to be, when you're on Batu, there are so many things to do. So I actually thought I didn't want to get off of Batu. That was a waste of money. We're spending all this money <laughs> to be locked in this Star Cruiser. We should stay there. But you could not, I mean, you could have just stayed in there and enjoyed yourself. But if you wanted to be part of all these gaming elements, uh, there's so much to do. You will never look at at a Batu the same way again. Oh, wow. There's yeah, every- this, this, is, this is my commercial for the Star Cruiser. It, <laughs> it opens up everything in Batu in terms of how they engineered it, how they put it together. All the stories are the, the star cruiser brings them all together. Wow. Um, and it, that is the real um, amazing part of the experience. Um, I could have spent more time running around doing the stuff in, in Batu and um it was 
it, it really kind of opens up that whole world. So like if you, if you're going to book the star cruiser and you do a, uh, I forget what it's called. Is it genie plus now or whatever for slinky dog dash during your day in Batu, you have screwed up. <laughs> okay. okay. You're, you're, you have screwed up. Um, you should, you should be staying in that star Wars land and interacting with people and interacting with so many different things that are now, meaningful that you would walk by a hundred times and not realize that was something oh, wow. to interact with. Wow. Um, so they have the Disney Disney play app that you can open up and uh, in star Wars land and you can there uh, that everybody can do. You don't have to be on the star cruiser to do this. And so that's basically what the data pad looks like is that that Disney play app while you're in star Wars land. Um, and there's codes like QR codes all over the place and you scan them and you collect things um, that you then um, some of the stuff you need. Um, and so it's specific to the star cruiser and some of it's just part of that too. Um, and you can do all of this and it shapes who your character is in, in the story as you're playing the quote unquote game. Um, and it just, it just really the, Smuggler's Run is integrated into it very well. Ogus Cantina is integrated into it. Rise of the Resistance, it all, everything comes together. <laughs> it really does. It's, mm-hmm. it's really amazing um, how they wove it. it. The Star Cruiser and, and Batu, they fit together as, as well as any, um, any hotel experience mm-hmm. and all that. It, it was, um, if anything, the, the, the stay is too short because I'm like, gosh, I, I could run around Batu and do all this stuff for like two days, <laughs> like, oh, wow. but you only get one. So, uh-huh. um, yeah. So you have to make choices. <laughs> How long do they give right. you in Batu? Is it like a few hours or when do you need to be back aboard the ship? I think you were, we were allowed to get off at any time after like, was it eight or so? Yeah. I, I think it was a good, it was a good day, like a good eight hours. It's funny okay. because when you look at it, you know, oh, it's such a short trip. This is so expensive for such a short amount of time. But because it's so packed and you're so immersed, it feels like so much time. And I agree that I feel like you have to, I feel like they should add at least another half day to the length to really let you soak it in. Or maybe, I mean, maybe this is where you get to go again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> leave it, they leave something on the table for you to come back. Right. For. I'm sure but that's part also, of the yeah, and if you've ever gotten, if you've ever done Savvy's and gotten a lightsaber, they give you a, like a, a pin with your experience that shows which kind of lightsaber you're getting, which I think is a visual cue for the people that are doing the Savvy's workshop uh, as to what kind of lightsaber to put in front of you. Uh, but they, in the most magical way possible. So when you were off on Batu, you also got a pin that was a Chandrilla Starline pin. And the... The all the cast members in Batu were really, they all knew that you were a Starliner guest. They all knew when they saw you, you got priority boarding or you know for whatever you they and they they pretty much I want to say kind of stayed in character and they if you didn't know what you were doing they would guide you okay a little bit like they got us into Ogas, uh, we had no reservation and they just sort of like snuck us into Ogas and said you have to stand but you know, we'll let you stand here until something happens or, you know, so it, it was, it was almost like the entire, it really felt like the whole Batu sort of, I don't know, this sounds bad, but like revolved around you in a sense, Okay. because everything, mm-hmm. everybody was paying attention to you. And there were all these elements that people were pulling together for. And, and they seemed to know more about it than we did, obviously. <laughs> so <laughs> Now, did it your was kids really en- cool. Did your kids enjoy the Batu side of the uh, experience as well? <laughs> Great. <laughs> they had a meltdown. We did oh, no. have a meltdown. I'm sorry. <laughs> they, I would say that they loved it, and it was overwhelming. It was it was well earned. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> there was so much to do. It was so much to do, and everybody had a different data pad set of instructions. Oh, the kids so, had data pads also. Oh yeah. Yes. Nice. And they all had. And so some of our missions would line up, but then some of us were one step ahead, but we didn't know. And then some of the missions were slightly different, but, you know, you'll be doing a similar mission for a different person. And so 
So they would be like, I have to go here. And we'd be like, well, we're going here first. And, you know, it would, so that could get a little bit crazy, but they just, they loved doing all, a lot of this stuff you actually can do just on the Disney parks app without going on the Skyline or some of the stuff that they really liked, which was just getting, you know, getting pieces of droid, like the, the fun little scanning crate type things that are already on there. So you can still enjoy that factory without paying for a a Star Cruiser room. Yes. (laughs) But yeah, it was a blast. It was a lot. It was a lot, and it was a blast for them. How was the uh, Star Cruiser room? Was it comfortable for the five of you? Did you, did the kids like it? Was it fun? Matt, you want to take it? Yeah, it, w- it was okay as a crash pad. Um, okay. So, because you you really don't spend a whole lot of time in the room when you're not sleeping. Right. Um, so, um, you know, it the for the five of us, I would say it's a little it was a little cramped, but everybody had their own bed because okay. they had the bunk beds and then they had the, the one that I think it folded down. It came out of the wall somehow. Um, and then I think the, the main bed was a queen, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so with everybody's luggage, you know, we were kind of tripping over each other a little bit when we were all in there, but we weren't all in there other than when we were sleeping. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so it's it's manageable from that standpoint. You know, if everybody's doing a bunch of makeup and as part of their costume, it, you know, I think that would be uh, that would make it a little tough because you know the there's the one bathroom and it's kind of um, it's a little small. Um, but but yeah, I didn't. You know, if you were if you were to say this is a resort room, I think you would be a little disappointed in it. Mm-hmm. And I think um, anybody who's going to the star cruiser who is you know looking for the resort type experience i don't know if the star cruiser is for you right because you know like i hear people saying can you believe there's no swimming pool i'm like who wants to be in a swimming pool and like (laughs) you know unless they want to make it part of the story then it's cool but i I can't imagine uh, like oh i'm just gonna you know miss all this stuff because i'd rather sit by the pool you know it, it just doesn't make sense to me and um, I think I, the other ridiculous one I saw people were complaining, oh, there's no spa. You know, if you're paying this much for a hotel room, you should at least have a spa. And I'm like, no, you don't want to go have your hair done right, right. <laughs> and your nails and stuff like that. You know, like there's stuff to do. Uh, and um, so I think if people are looking for, um, you know, that type of luxury experience for the price, then uh, um, they're probably going to be disappointed. Um but the the price is the experience, and I think the more you interact with the experience, the better, the more value you get out of mm-hmm. it. Um, it, it. It is a whole immersive thing. The whole, you know, I think it's, you know, when you boil it down, it's not even like quite two full days, but, and it's, it's full go, start to finish. And, you know, it's like one of those, I need a vacation from my, right. after my vacation kind of thing. Right. So, um mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 full go. <laughs> um, I'm going to disagree slightly with Matt, though, and say I thought the room was great and a nice size and that he thinks all rooms are small if he has to be in them with us. So <laughs> 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 um, the idea of a one of being in one room gives him hives. So, yeah. And also they did have really nice um, they had like face wash cloths and they had a lot of nice little things. But I, I do agree agree that it was not um it wasn't what you would call like a it wasn't a fancy experience although it was upscale it was supposed to feel upscale but there were elements we talked about this there were elements that were less than like it wasn't to put it to put it in like disney language it was it was like a deluxe like maybe a chef mickey's no not really that's a bad example but like an ohana dinner deluxe dinner or table service dinner versus a it wasn't like victoria and alberts Mm -hmm. or it wasn't like it wasn't like even like a artist point kind of or yachtsman deluxe feeling yeah the 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 dinners the dinners are served but the other all the other meals are you know uh, are cafeteria style so you know you grab your tray and okay you work your way through the, the, gotcha. the chow line, if you will. So <laughs> I, I think people looking for a luxury experience might be a little taken aback by that, um, that type of what somebody's not going to, you know, take my order and serve right. me kind of thing. So, right. Right. 
So let me ask yep. this, because we said this is a very active trip, lots of stuff going on. How do you know when it's safe to go to bed and how do you know when you need to get up so you don't miss anything? I feel like Good it was question. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, so I feel like they didn't start this. I feel like the, the itinerary sort of had an end point for you. Did it? Okay. And then, and then everybody kind of like, you know, they would say there would be some kind of, you know, the ship captain or something would say like, okay, good night, everybody. And, oh, okay. And, there's a cue. Yeah. There's a cue that the story is over for the night, yes. but you can still go like we played Sabak one night late into the evening with our new friends. And, uh, that was just, that was really fun. It, so there was still opportunity. It wasn't like you had to go back right, to your room. Right. But, mm -hmm. and, and, and then so at bad. some point, yeah, there are, all of our kids showed up and, uh, they said they closed the engineering room. So. <laughs> was the engineering room? The is that like a kid's club thing? You wouldn't, you wouldn't think, but it kind of was. Okay. It was, it was like, I can't even explain it except that it was just this giant room full of things to do in the sense that like, there were like buttons to press and levers and noises and lights. And it was like, every wall had like an interaction of some sort. And then there were like secret passage type things. Wow. And like, I don't know, I don't want to give anything away, but the kids, I don't even know what they did. But they spent like five hours and we asked the cast to because our kids are nine, nine and seven and they're pretty they're pretty independent at this point, but they're not so independent that, you know, like we would let them go together from like one floor to another on a cruise ship where there's no ingress or egress. And so that's what I asked the I asked the cast, like, is this the kind of thing where we like if they're this age and they're fairly like, is that is this a safe thing to let them say go to the engineering room? Uh, on a different floor if we're sitting in the lounge and they, they were like, Oh yeah, they can't get off without you. And they can't get, they can't go anywhere without you. And it's, it's, it is, we said it felt large, but it really isn't that large. So mm -hmm. there are only so many places to find them. And uh, they, and they were always in the engineering room, so it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, they had, they had like really enjoyed that independence. Oh, and one quick thing, because I know, um, you know, at some point you're going to round us up here. I wanted to put a plug in for the photography. Oh, so okay. we were, they kind of chased us down about it they, right before we <laughs> were going to leave. Uh, or, yeah, I got a phone call that said from the Star Cruiser staff that said, would you like, uh, we we noticed you hadn't enrolled for the special photography session. And I was thinking, like, when are we going to have time for that? But I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do it. It was I think it was $100, which seemed completely reasonable for, for um, what it was, especially compared to cruises, but they basically did portraits. And I was like, I've spent a hundred dollars on stupider things. So, um, we signed up for it and we are going in costume. They, they were so patient. First of all, we ended up having to reschedule because we were completely not ready, but at the time we scheduled that morning. And then they not only were they patient with us with that, but then we couldn't get our, we couldn't find our children all in advance of the <laughs> photography session. So we said they're, you know, we, I, they're in the engineering room. We have to go get them. We'll be back. And it's only a half hour slot, but they were like, how about we just come down with you? So they came down and they took pictures of the kids in the engineering room. Oh. And they were like, I cannot, I don't remember if I sent you any of these pictures, Tim, but they were incredible. They, I told the kids, like, you will never have a picture you love as much as this picture, as long as you look like they were in costume. They had lightsabers. They yeah, were the like, brand new lightsabers. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh. And they, they looked like they were in a movie. They looked like they were, they looked like they were characters in Star Wars. And, and, um, yeah, the, the pictures with us in it, well, they had us in it, but <laughs> the, the pictures with the kids, I would have like, in retrospect, I probably would have, I don't even know how much I would have paid for those. I don't want to tell Disney how right, much right, I would have paid for right. them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a huge, I think that that was one of the best, um, I think that that having that add on was just really incredible and really made our, I, I'm glad we did it. That's good to hear. I haven't heard anything about the photography on the Sark, Sark Cruiser, so that's great. Yes, I'll send some pictures. Oh, please see what do. I mean. <laughs> please do. All right. Emily, you are right. We need to wrap this up pretty soon, but how do they end the Star Cruiser cruise? How do they uh, send you guys home? Is there a special ceremony? What do they kick you off the ship? <laughs> <laughs> the the story um, comes to – it's it's – and um, the night, 
the second night. Um, and um, there's a there's a whole bunch of things that that lead up to it that you participate in and then you kind of watch. Um, and the 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 ending or the the final part of the show, if you will, or the story um, is fantastic. Um, again, they did a great job putting all of that together. And um, it's it's really it's, you know, not. 100% unexpected what happens, but at the same time, um, it is a good story. It's original, um, even though some, as they say, some of the characters you're familiar with, um, but it's just really good. And then they kind of, it's kind of a celebratory atmosphere, kind of a party type atmosphere after that. Um, and then uh, from there, it's pretty much like getting off a normal Disney cruise. Okay. <laughs> you know, they, they want your luggage in <laughs> right. the hallway the night before and, uh, <laughs> Um, you know, they start sounding the alarm around 9 a.m. Like, okay. get out, get out, get right, out. Right, right, right. Stuff. But, we had a good time. We looked um, like no, we it's were not here. The, but. Yeah, it's not that aggressive. But, you know, we had we had breakfast in the morning and they also have grab and go stuff. But, um, you know, the, the last morning is pretty much just about leaving. Um, mm-hmm. There's there's nothing left mm-hmm. to do that morning. Everything's done the night before and um, and and done very well. Um, it's. It, it, like I said, it, if you are, you know, uh, the whole Star Wars experience, you know, I grew up with the original series, the original trilogy or whatever. Um, I will never watch the prequels or the sequels as much as I watched those three movies. Uh, now I have seen every one of those movies a couple of times. But, um, you know, it's. It's, I like all of it. Um, you know, I know there's controversy around, you know, the, the latest three movies, but I like all of it and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And if you're a fan of Star Wars, um, I would say put it on put it on the bucket list um, because I think it's it's incredible the way they fit everything together, especially with the integration into the theme park and all of that. It's um it's really a lot of fun. Um, um, and then the upfront sticker shock, I think goes away after you realize what you just took part in. Um, it's basically, Mm -hmm. it's, it's being in a live action star Wars movie and, and playing a game and watching a show all at the same time. They like integrate all those elements together and they, and they, it's Disney and they do stuff like that very well. Um, it's it's pretty seamless, <laughs> um, uh, and you know so, it, yeah, and you know it, there's not a lot of the there's a lot of social media stuff out there, a lot of stuff on YouTube, and you know after doing it, I I started paying attention to a lot more because I wasn't afraid of spoilers. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Some of them get it right, but most of them get it really wrong. Really, um, okay. and it's just, especially the negative ones are the ones that are they're getting it wrong and. Um, if Disney makes this work, I could see them doing it with a Marvel themed experience, you know, as they, as they integrate those products and storylines, I could see them doing it over and over again Mm -hmm. with other, other products that have staying power, like the star Wars films do. Um, it's that it is a very unique experience. And I I think it's ultimately where theme parks are going to go. It's just crazy how they, bring everything together and immerse you at the same time. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I would expand to say that you don't even have to love Star Wars because I do like Star Wars. I like it. I like I'm married into Star Wars for the <laughs> most party most part. But <laughs> you just have to be sort of uh you it helps to be like sort of game for whatever. And if you're at all science fiction oriented, because it's not so sci it's not so Star Wars that you have to know Star Wars to be mm-hmm. able to like they're, they're most of the characters are new. Um, they're they're still like well incorporated into that universe. But if you think about Star Wars, it's just it's like a it's the universe, right? And it's just mm-hmm. all these imaginary people and planets and things like that. And they're just telling one story that they that that happened there or many stories. But so as long as you're in for a good story and as long as you're you know willing to sort of pick up and and you know put just like make up a story for yourself and just immerse yourself in it. I think you won't be bummed if you don't, you could go on there and not know anything about star Wars, but if you were just kind Mm -hmm. of 
uh, cool with science fiction. You'd be great in playing in <laughs> in play the game. Yeah, right. And the, um, the one thing I kn- I don't think we talked about are the these non-player characters. Um, you know, they they are a huge part of it. They make it the experience very personal. Okay. Um, uh, the one uh, uh, player, uh, the one guy who plays a scoundrel type character, um, you know, he sat down with us at the, at the bar one night and he looks you right in the eye and he says, hey, you know, you want to do this thing for me. Um, if you if you're down for doing it, OK, well, meet me here uh, at, at this time. And like like personally invites you, looks you in the eye and, and does it all in character. Mm-hmm. And then you show up and there's like 25 other people there. And it's like, <laughs> okay, we're going to do this mission. And, but it's, it's, it's really fun. Um, okay. and yeah, it's really, they're all, it, it's very personalized. The, the person who, uh, uh, the gentleman who, who did the, the first order officer, um, he was fantastic. Um, and he even got heckled and immediately in <laughs> character Good. had a response that was just so- priceless <laughs> oh nice it nice. was the best and it was it was just it's one of those experiences you can't uh, like it probably took me two weeks to even be able to put anything into words you know it was just like what just happened to me yes let everything but, process yeah it was it was like that when i came back to work on that tuesday i just people were like was it good and i was like yes <laughs> i can't exactly explain it yet wow <laughs> so, that's awesome well, Matt and Emily, thank you so much for sharing your story with us on the Galactic Star Cruiser. Well, may the fourth be with you, and thank oh. you for having me today. Oh, guys, thank you so <laughs> much. Uh, Emily, if someone wants to talk to you, where can they find you? They can find me hanging out with Tim Scott. Or Matt. <laughs> or Matt. <laughs> <laughs> or at Looper Nation Live. And, um, yep, just enjoying a good, um, uh, oh, my gosh, Tonneray Chardonnay, probably. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And how about you, Matt? What's your drink of choice? What are you going to, if somebody wants to reach you? <laughs> um, the best way to reach me is through my wife. Good um, call. The Good only call. social media I have is uh, LinkedIn, which probably isn't where many Disney fans go to interact right, with right, people. Right. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, I can't remember what they, they had a drink uh, on there uh, called the, it was basically a Manhattan Um but it had a special name um, and it was fantastic. And they put this giant frozen silver ball in it. Um, and it was really good. <laughs> Excellent. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, guys, once again, thanks for joining me on the show. I'm Tim Scott. If you think you might want to go to the Galactic Star Cruiser, there's always resort, resortlooptravel.com. Everybody, you've been listening. To yes. the Gateway to the magic. This may the fourth be with you. 2022 guys, can you take us out? See ya in space, everybody. Ooh, in yep. space. Vacation memories will stay with you and your family for a lifetime. The Resort Loop Travel Group was created with this in mind. Our fee-free services will relieve you of the stress and confusion of finding and booking the best vacation at the best price. After booking, we will continue to monitor for ways to save you even more on your vacation. We will check for any upcoming packages and discounts to save you as many vacation dollars as possible. Resort Loop Travel Group, gateway to your magical vacation memories. Get a quote or for more information, visit resortlooptravelgroup.com.